Hi guys, my name is Noelle, and I am the handler of Jax and the creator of this channel. Um, welcome. In today's video, we're going to work on two basic commands that are great for any general dog to know and are particularly important for a service dog to know. Um, we'll start by introducing what we call puppy push-ups, which is our training warm-up, and then we will get into the commands leave it and a sitting stay. So we'll start with our push-ups. Um, these serve as a warm-up for the dogs. It lets them know that we have treats as well that we want their attention and for them to be focused on us. Um, these should be quick and simple commands that the dog knows well. Uh, we don't want to start with something new because that can be frustrating for the dog when they are having a hard time understanding what we're asking them to do. If you're just starting your training, these would mainly consist of sit, down, stand, and look. But as the dog becomes more familiar with your training, you can definitely introduce these new commands we'll go over today into these as well. As you can see, my friend Buddy that I'm working with there doesn't like a lot of the positions we're trying to do. He's old and he's stubborn and he's kind of set in his ways. Um, so with this, what you want to do is you want to focus your energy on something other than what he's not choosing to do. Um, this will allow them to kind of stay interested in the training and kind of pay more attention to you. So with this, we want to try what we're asking them to do a few times and then move on to something else and just keep that excitement and that um, happy voice with it all. Ultimately, these push-ups um, should last about the first five minutes of your training session for them to truly understand what it is we're asking them to do. Leave it is the next command. This is something that is extremely useful as a pet owner and phenomenal when it comes to service teams. With this command, we're asking the dog to ignore an object and keep their attention with us. This can be used with noises, people, other animals, and even objects. For this command, we want treats in both hands. We'll present one hand to the dog and ask them to leave it. While they're doing this, we don't want to repeatedly say, leave it, leave it, leave it. We kind of want to intermix this with correction noises. So for example, we'd be kind of saying, leave it, ah, uh -uh, leave it, sh leave it, ah, uh -uh, that kind of thing. This will allow the dog to really understand the command quickly and allow that consistency to form. We'll present that initial hand. We'll ask the dog to leave it. And once the dog looks away, we want to treat and praise with that opposite hand. This kind of seems like a daunting task due to us kind of waving these yummy treats in front of their faces but eventually the dog will get bored or distracted and we'll just kind of use that to our advantage. When treating with this command, we want them to think that what we're offering is more exciting and yummy than what they're interested in, hence why we always, always, always want to treat with that opposite hand. For pet dogs, this is great to help them stay out of danger and keep them safe. If somebody was to spill a bottle of aspirin or a bag of chocolate chips or something, we want them to completely ignore that object on the floor in their kind of grasp. Um, and we want them to think that what we have is better than that, which is why this leave it command is phenomenal for that. Um, for service dogs, this is great um, with people that are interfering with your work or offering distractions um, or other things you may see in that type of environment. As the dog starts to get familiar with this command, we can start to expose the treats more and more and kind of test their self-control. What I normally do is I go from a closed presented fist to a pile on the ground that I can have the ability to cover with my hand. Um, I will slowly move my hand away, but I want to make sure that I'm still able to interfere and block those treats as I need to. This allows the treats to be more exposed and the dog to have more of an opportunity to steal those. Um, following that, once they kind of get that part down, I'll add movement by throwing the treats. And you can even do this with toys and other objects such as shoes and socks. So it's definitely one of our favorite commands to use. The next command is a sit-stay. This command tests your pup's self-control and it has them remain stationary for a period of time. Um, with this type of command, we don't want to push the dog, we want to go at their pace and really help them by setting them up for success with this type of task or command, whatever you want to refer to this as. Um, for example, with this, if we're taking two steps away from the dog and they are trying to get up and come to us, we want to 
go back to an easier level of this and take one step back instead. Once they kind of get that down a little more concrete, we can try those two steps again. Um, for this particular command, we'll place them into a sit position. We'll praise them by saying good boy, good dog, um, and offering a treat. We'll ask them to stay and present that hand gesture. For us, it's a closed fist. For others, it's a full hand. Whatever works for you guys is fine. Um, and what we'll do is we'll ask them to stay. We'll remain stationary for the initial one. We'll use a release word to let them know that they are done. And then we'll treat and praise. For us, release is our release word, but we have had other people use break, free, all done. Anything works as long as you're consistent with whatever you use. So as they start to get the idea, you can start to slowly move back with this. We don't want to go from not moving at all to taking five steps back because that's a very big jump. So it's definitely slow and steady with this particular task. Um, and as they get the idea, you can add more of that space between you guys. If you're going too far away like Buddy was there, um, we'll place them back into that initial sit try a shorter distance and then treat and praise again for that. Um, with this one, as you reach longer times and distances, you definitely want to make sure to help remind the pup um, of what they're doing by asking them to stay and then again using that release word. Well, thanks for watching guys. We hope this video helps clarify how to do these really important tasks and commands for both an obedient dog as well as a service dog. If you have any questions or confusion with this, feel free to let us know in the comments below and we will help out to the best of our ability. If you haven't already, make sure to like this video and subscribe, especially if you'd like to continue to see information such as this. And you guys can also follow us on Instagram as well. Um, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.